Good morning. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. I am going live to bring you coffee and a card. My name is Tiffany Almeida. I'm with Pretty and Paper Crafts, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I go live every Sunday for coffee and a card where I show you three projects using Stampin' Up! product. And today, I'm really excited to show you guys what I made using that beautiful Celebrate Sunflowers bundle. So today's set is called Celebrate Sunflowers. It comes with these beautiful dies that cut out very detailed and intricate pieces of the stamp set, as well as some extra goodies. I've been actually wanting to use this um, set for a while, but uh, finally got to it. So, um, Let's go ahead. I'm going to show you what I made today and then we'll um, go through each project one by one. This next one, I have to show you my, I got a birthday card from Kathy Ty. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, I have to show you Kathy's card. So it goes like, like this. It fits in a normal envelope, handmade by Kathy. So then when, when I opened it, I was surprised by this beauty. Look at that, you guys. She made me a little cup of tea, a little happy birthday, and that ornate, um, ornate floral paper. It was such a sweet surprise. So I have had this on my shelf, and I've been dying to make one myself. I'd never made a triangle corner card with a little pop-up before. So... I knew that some flowers would be a wonderful opportunity to do that. So I took the sunflower and I made myself a little sunflower stand. Look at that, so cute. And then of course you can't see it in person, it sparkles and shines because I used Wink Estella because of course, why wouldn't I? But this is just a beautiful card. And guys, listen, can you hear this? You hear that little snap? It has a magnet to hold it open and so it can stay closed or stay open and stay together. Love it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make this project. I used Jan B's, uh, one of her tutorials and she used magnets and I was like, oh, genius. Okay. All right, so project number two is this very fun um, triangle corner pop-up card. Say that 10 times fast. Triangle corner pop-up card. So we're going to do this card here. If I can remember everything. It's kind of scary. It's kind of nerve-wracking. You know, I made this once and then it's like, okay, is my confidence enough that I know how to make this again? So here are the pieces that you need and you will never need to write down measurements because they're all over on my project sheet. The project sheet lists today's projects with all the items that I used and all the measurements. So on my project sheet, um, to find my project sheet, you will go to my blog post. There's a link in the description of this video to my blog post. Down at the bottom of the photo, so at the, after the very last photo, there is a link that says um, July 19th project sheet. Click on that link. It takes you to the project sheet and it gives you everything. So this piece measures eight inches by eight inches. This is Bumblebee cardstock. Whatever cardstock you use, you need one that's eight inches by eight inches. And we're gonna do some cutting and scoring on this piece. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna do some scoring first. So on one side, it doesn't matter which because it's square. Maybe I need to turn it this way so it's easier. I hate reaching, but I think it's easier for you guys to see if I do it this way. So on the eight, on the four inch score line here, we're gonna score down across. And then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna line it up again at the four inch and take our scoring board, our score blade down and we're gonna score from the side to that middle score line. So stop at the middle score line. So stop at four inches like that, okay? So let's make sure we got it. Now, keeping this on the four, Take your cutting blade and cut up to that four inch score line. Okay, like that. Now, think of it as like pants, right? These are the legs of the pants. Now what we need to do is we need to score from the top of the pants, not the legs of the pants, the top of the pants, diagonally across to that score line in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my card in sideways here. And I'm gonna line up that middle point with the side point in the track. 
and I need to get closer so I can see. So excuse me if my head gets in the way. So scoring that diagonally, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this other side. And I mentioned I learned this card technique by from Jan B. She had a video of a card like this, and she added magnets. So this card actually has magnets in it to hold it closed like this which is just awesome. So I love that she did that and I'm a big magnet fan. So I'm excited to show you guys how to do this. Okay, so let me see if I can get my camera to cooperate here. I feel like it's, I feel like I'm losing you guys. Okay, so now we're going to just burnish all the score lines. Fold it in half, make sure it lines up nice and easy. Okay, so we've got our four, four folds. Now these ones, if, if your card's gonna fold like this, these need to fold away. So fold away, burnish, fold away, burnish, okay? So we've got the kind of basic shape. All right, now we need some other pieces. So this, let's see, we need two pieces of Whisper White that are three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Nope, I lied, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. These are gonna be the two bottom pieces here. So we're not going to cut those. So three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Then we need two that are three and three quarters by three and three quarters. We're gonna cut these in half diagonally because they're gonna be part of these panels that are up here. So the next thing you need is DSP. So you've gotta be mindful of what design you want in the DSP. So I'm using the flowers for every season, and these are the three colors that I picked. And so you have to figure out where you want them. Two of them that you want up here. So it's kind of like my main color and then like a background kind of um, accent color. So my main color and my accent color, these squares measure three and a half by three and a half. And then I wanted, and then you're gonna have one that goes on this bottom piece here. It goes right here. And so I was gonna do the same green, but I felt like it was too busy, too much. So I toned it down with a yellow on yellow. And this piece measures um, three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Was that a lot? Did you guys get all that? <laughs> Again, all of this information is on the project sheet. Okay, so. You don't wanna cut those larger whisper white pieces or the larger piece of DSP, but we need to cut these four pieces diagonally. So get your trimmer back in, put this in. And it, because my, it, my um, DSP is not a directional, I don't have to worry about how I cut it. If your DSP is a directional, like if it has um, text or something in it, then you'll wanna make sure you're cutting in a way that everything won't be upside down or backwards. So I'm putting this here diagonally in my track. Now, one of the things I recommend is moving your cutting blade into the paper because if you try to start right here and go up, you might crunch the corners. Have you guys ever crunched your cardstock before? I do it all the time, but I remembered today to move my blade up and not crunch my corners. Thanks to Jan B. She reminded me several times in the video not to do that. Okay, so putting my blade in the middle of the paper, cutting up and down and not crunching my corners. Okay, so we've got the two pieces of Whisper White. Now we're gonna do the two pieces of DSP. Lots of measurements on this one. There's quite a few little pieces, but it actually isn't as um, crazy as I make it sound. I just wanted to talk you through the paper and the decision making, making around the different sizes because it's important to know what size you wanna cut what down to. So when I'm making this card, I'm always like, what? you know, when I watch a tutorial, I'm like, well, I don't wanna cut my DSP because what if it's not the right direction or it's not the one I wanted? Anyways. All right, so now that we've got these cut, we have the fun job of gluing each one of these triangles onto our whisper white triangle. So you're gonna need your liquid glue for this because you wanna get down into the points. And so now you get the fun job of watching me glue triangles together, which is really exciting. You can always take this opportunity to 
share my video on your page to be entered to my door prize or go find the project sheet and print it off <laughs> and come back. Um, or just talk amongst yourselves or go get some coffee, <laughs> coffee refill. Oh, I didn't know that, Patty. So both the seal plus and seal refills fit the fast fuse container. I did not know that. That's crazy. How cool is that? Though I do love the new seal holder. I love the design and the grip and everything. Okay, so one more. The paper is gorgeous on both sides. It just pains me to glue beautiful paper down so I can't see it. Oh, all right. So now we've got these two. Let's go ahead and glue this on here because we don't need it for anything. Come on. I'm trying not to get glue on my fingers. Okay. So I'm not, I have to remember about magnets. Remember magnets because that's, you know, as we're starting to glue, we want to be careful and not forget about our magnets. So now we can glue these little triangle pieces down. Sunflowers are so fun. Okay. And then this. So as a reminder, while we are doing this, if you guys are interested in the Creativity Delivered Kit, which uses the Well Done Bundle this month, Ashley and I design a Creativity Delivered Kit that is basically crafting made easy, delivered right to your door, in an adorable personalized stamp case. It all comes with $20 in Stampin' Up! product and eight make and takes and a cute case. It's totally worth it, 35 bucks. This month we're using the whale bundle set and the registration for that closes on tomorrow. So if you were thinking about it and you want it, don't miss out. If you register today, you can get in or tomorrow. Okay, so um, magnet time. I am going, I have these magnets here that I bought off of Amazon. There's a little tiny strong magnets. All I need are two. So you need your magnets and you need glue dots. So this first magnet, it doesn't matter which side you put the glue dot on, but you're gonna put the glue dot down and then you're gonna put it down in your corner of your card. Now you don't want it to be very close to the, um, to the bottom because you want your cardstock to cover it, but um, you want it for, you know, decent, a decent distance away. And then I'm gonna put glue on the back of my panel here that I'm gonna glue on top of my magnet. So I put a little bit of glue around the magnet and I'm putting this on top of it and it's gonna cover our magnet up. And because we're using liquid glue and the magnets are not very thick, but thick enough that you'll notice them. There's a little mountain here forming. I just wanna hold this down so that it glues down really well. And with liquid glue, it just takes a few seconds. It's not very long at all. So just making sure this is all glued down. That magnet's not going anywhere. Now, this next magnet that we put a glue dot on, it is going to be important where we, what side we put the glue because you know, there is a good side and a bad side. What I like to do is just take the magnet and let it automatically stick on the back side where the magnet is. And then I take a glue dot and stick it right on the magnet. So now, I know that I have the magnet, the glue dot on the right side of the magnet. Now I stick it back, there's a glue dot on the back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up with this other piece here. See, we're gonna fold it, line it up, and stick down so that that magnet sticks to the cardstock that's opposite, okay? Now, the, before I glue this panel, this is that three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths panel down. Before I glue that down, I wanna stamp a sunflower because I wanna kinda of hide the fact that there's a little bump there where the magnet is. So the sunflower distracts us from that. So I'm gonna take a little sunflower stamp and I'm just gonna stamp it in bumblebee ink. Okay, so. I'm just gonna turn it, stamp it in the corner, bam. 
And now we can glue this on. So I'm gonna put, again, just a little circle of adhesive around the magnet and then around the back side of our Whisper White. And we're gonna glue this down to this side. Okay, see what we're doing? We're almost there. Almost there. All right, so again, just because there is that little circle in there, we gotta make sure the edge is glued down nicely. So I'm just holding it here for a second, pushing down, waiting for the glue to dry. Okay, that's the last thing we want is the sides to pick up and have an ugly edge there. So Okay, so now when we fold this, it snaps in place and we have the beginning of this card. Now to decorate. So I'm gonna put my little sunflower here so you guys can see it. I have it flat here. Now, one of the things we need is a piece, another piece of bumblebee cardstock. This piece measures six inches by three and a half inches, and it's scored at three inches, and it's scored at four and three eighths inches, okay? So this is actually going to be that little stand that picks up our sunflower. So my bone folder and burner see score lines really well. Okay. So we're gonna need that six by three and a half for our little stand. And we also need to do our sunflower. So I have a piece of Whisper White here. I'm gonna stamp this beautiful sunflower. I'm actually gonna do it in soft suede. That's the brown I used was soft suede. And then we're gonna color it with the Stampin' Blends. Dawn, I um, meant to post the link of the magnets that I bought off of Amazon. Um, I meant to post them in the project sheet and then I forgot last night at 10 o'clock at night. So um, I will post it in the comments or in the description of this video. I'll go in and edit it and send you guys the link of the magnets that I order off of Amazon. Okay, so I did that and I'm also gonna stamp my a set of leaves. Now I mentioned to you guys, I lost my leaf die from this set, this large leaf die. I lost two of them, there's two dies. There's a detailed die, just like the sunflower, and then there's the outline, and I lost both. And I used them for a swap back in the end of May. So I, they're gotta be here somewhere, I just don't know where. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of upset at myself. I'm laughing about it, but I'm really mad. I was tearing apart my craft room yesterday and I couldn't find them. All right, so I've got my sunflower, I've got the leaves, and I'm also gonna stamp the sentiment. This is one of those Stitch So Sweetly dies. Um, and that we're gonna stamp the sentiment. I love this sentiment that says, congratulations on reaching a whole new level of wonderful. Which is such a sweet sentiment. Okay, so there is our sentiment. All right, now we're gonna color our sunflower. Now, this is how I color my sunflower. This is not how you have to color your sunflower. Um, but this is kind of what I figured with the blends. So for the yellow, I'm using Mango Melody because we do not have Bumblebee blends, unfortunately. But the Mango Melody is very close, I think, and which is why they didn't make a Bumblebee one. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking my light Mango Melody and I'm just giving a base coat on my sunflower. So just coloring all the leaves. All the leaves are gonna be colored. Just using the brush tip and trying not to stay out of the line or trying not to get out of the lines, but when you're in a hurry, sometimes that happens. Okay, all right. So there's my base. Now, while it's still wet, you want to go in with your darker color and you want to do your shading. So I'm taking the fine tip of the darker Mango Melody and I am shading these flowers. I am going in where these lines are and making them darker. And this will add dimension to your flower. This will make it look like there are levels. It will look like, oh, there's shadow here. That means this flower is in the back. 
it just starts to form um, more dimension, more shading, more realistic. So again, I just let the stamp tell me, the stamp is already telling me where the shade is. It's already telling me where it's darker, where it's lighter because of those little fine lines that are in there. So I am just shading where those lines are with my fine tip of my Dark Mango Melody. Okay. Okay. So there is our shading. Now for the center of my sunflower, I like to use soft suede. So I'm gonna use light soft suede and give it a base coat like the seeds, brown seeds. And then I like to take the dark and I like to kind of follow the shading around the edges. And I like to color the center, okay? And then I'm gonna take my light again and we're gonna blend those. You don't want those sharp edges, we're just gonna blend it all. Okay, so there is the center of our sunflower. Now, one thing I do like to do is go back over with the light. So now that I've colored in with the dark, I'm just kind of going in with the light again and just adding even more color and kind of blending the shading that I did. Okay, and this is just gonna add layers and layers of different colors, different shades to our sunflower, okay? So there's our sunflower. Now we're gonna color the leaves. I just did Just Jade. I just did Just Jade. That's a lot of justs. So I'm just going to do the light Just Jade. And then you know I gotta go back through with my dark and do the ribbing and the detail. Okay. All right, let's do a little bit of blending. Good enough for me. Now we can do some die cutting. So now we're gonna cut some things out. So we have to cut out these three, these images here, but we're also gonna cut out some more of these little sprigs. Now these, the sprig dies, oh, I just love them. So these two little dies are just awesome. Great for foliage if you need foliage. And then we have the little leaves. And like I mentioned, I lost the big leaf. Oh and then we have the sunflower outline. So we need to cut these, and then we also need to cut our little stand. So this little piece here, we're gonna make it into a circle. So what we're gonna do is use the layering circle dies. I'm not using the largest layering circle, I'm gonna be using the second largest because the largest is just a slightly too big for the sunflower. There's some places where the yellow would show through on the sunflower. So I use the second largest layering circle for that. All right, so let's get our big shot here and we will cut out all these things that we need. So let me move this little label out of the way. Okay. So let's get our magnetic plate and our sunflower. Now again, remember I use the ones that are going at an angle to line up my sunflower. That's what I always use. It's the easiest and quickest way. I have the two little leaves that I can cut out. Now let's do this piece here, our little hinge. So what you're gonna do, the most important thing um, about this is you're going to line this up. My, my fold is right here, here's my fold. And I'm gonna line this circle up all the way up to the edge of it. So you don't wanna cut into it, but you wanna leave just a tiny bit of fold. You 
You don't need a lot. So you can see it's still attached, okay? So the only thing we have left to do is this little guy. We gotta cut him out. Sorry, you guys, I have to fussy cut him because my dies are missing. No one's gonna be looking at my leaf anyway. Okay, all right, so there's our little leaf. And now we can put this, put this together. So here's our pieces. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to strategically place some sprigs behind my sunflower and um, get up. You just have to make sure that it doesn't go over the edge uh, edges. So if you're gonna glue your sprig, it has to be in such a way that um, it's tucked in far enough that it's not going over. So this should be good, right? So let's go ahead and put some adhesive on the back or on the front of these leaves. And I'm just going to glue my sunflower on top. And then while it's still wet, we can put this on here and see if we need to do some adjusting, but I think this will be good. Okay. All right, so there's our little sprigs. Let's go ahead and put our little leaves on here as well. And I'm just going to put glue dots on the front of them. So my two little leaves, I'm gonna to glue together and put a glue dot on the front. So they're glued together. I don't want any adhesive on the back showing because I don't want it to stick. I don't want my sunflower to stick to anything. So I'm just putting them where my sprigs are, okay? And then we'll do this side as well. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a little liquid glue so I can I can wiggle around. Okay, so again, just making sure that those aren't gonna be in the way of anything, which it looks good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is the top of this circle that has a fold, you can put adhesive on the front part, only the front part. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is glue our sunflower down. And what you don't want to do is you don't want it to go past. Like you don't wanna be able to see the sunflower or see the yellow behind the sunflower. So just right up to the edge, okay? Just like so, like that, okay? Now we can glue our circle. So put glue on the back of our circle and we can glue our sunflower down to the center of our square. So what I'm doing is just making sure my leaves and everything aren't in the way. Gluing this down. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is put our little um, sentiment and sprigs here in the bottom. And I'm just going to put some, actually I'm not even going to do that. So I'm just going to put some sprigs coming out of my border there. And I'm gonna put dimensionals down on top to hold them in place because you want dimensionals on this label so that your sunflower has something to catch against when you stand it up. So putting dimensionals, it forms two purposes. It makes it popped up and it also holds my, my twigs down or my foliage down. So I'm gonna pop up my sunflower and I'm gonna put my label down. And hopefully it's center, hopefully it's right. Like so, I don't feel like my sunflower is center, but that's my fault. All right, so there you go. So there's our label. There's our beautiful sunflower. Now the last thing I did was added Wink Estella to bring even more little shimmer and shine to my project. Now you could put Wink Estella in the center or you can paint all the leaves with Wink Estella. I kind of did it all because I like a lot of shimmer and shine and you can't see it on camera and you can't see it in pictures even, but you can see it in person and it's gorgeous. So there you go, you guys. Look at this fun card. I love that it's magnetic. Now, the best part about this card is that it can fold up 
and fit into a regular envelope just fine. And you can put your message, you can put your message here and it can be hidden, a little hidden secret message. And then they can pop it up on their, on their desk and enjoy it for days and days to come. How fun, right? So these are the beautiful sunflowers. I hope you love them as much as I do. I don't know why I waited so long to play with them. Um, you just get these gorgeous flower cards. They make such a statement. They're so pretty. I'll bring in my sunflowers. Look at all these pretty sunflowers. You guys love it? Thank you so much for watching this week. I enjoy going live with you every Sunday. I hope you have a fabulous week. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.